tell me if you see my slide and you can hear me great great yeah you're good so hi everyone um i organized this symposium and i prepared a mixed speech but not mine so <laughs> i have name uh, i am young Juli, data information service medical library a little bit running behind so that's enough about me disclaimer what I'm presenting may look like research result, but it's not. It's more of an idea at this stage. I'm still finding some flaws in my methodology, but it's an interesting idea. The previous speakers have focused on NH data. My focus is after you researchers study the data and find interesting and significant and publish. That's my data. So there are thousands of research articles published using NHANES data. So my question is, what stories do they tell? So as you, you can see, my research question is, is not really scientific. So to cite, to analyze publication citation, you first have to get all the publications. So I use PubMed. So I'm looking at from 1980 to 2019, 40 years. So the way I harvested is I searched NHANES full title, National Health and Nutrition Exam Survey, in quotation mark, and just to look for title and abstract. I also searched NHANES in abbreviation and or it with the first search. One of the question came when uh, Yutaka was presenting, asked about, uh, is there a repository that we can look all um, the publication? The answer I sent was no. That's why the search was complicated. So after I got more than 14,000 citation, I started cringing, um, uh, eliminate first positive. I found that there are more than almost 3,000 studies using Korean National Health and Nutrition Exam Survey. So I deleted that. And there are about 20 South African National Health and uh, Nutrition Exam Survey. And then I also deleted not written in English. And also in terms of publication type, I didn't want editorial. I also deleted CDC's Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report because I only care about journal articles. And because I'm looking in 1980s and 2019, I deleted previous to 1980 and this year. And this is not complete. So if you want this data, you want to make appointment with our informationist. We rob or carry, not necessary, but um, if you don't know anyone, contact us. So this is what I have. 7056. So I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm wondering, we, we got some feedback that your slides are a little small. I think you're in presenter mode, possibly. So just. OK. Uh, is it better to fit to my query? So I have 11,056. So I'm looking at this data. Uh, and in a brief glance, as you can see, that the number of publications using NHANES is rapidly growing from 2000. So in terms of method of analyzing the publication, I first used um, topic analysis using NASH. If you never heard of NASH, Again, time to make appointment with your librarian. When you go to PubMed, let's say you find an article. This is published by Hopkins authors, near vision impairment and frailty, evidence of an association. It is published in American Journal of Ophthalmology. So if you scroll down forever, then you will find MESH. MESH stands for medical subject heading, and these are terminologies that are used by National Library of Medicine to describe what the um, study is about. So you can see that about aged, or aged, aged meaning 65 and older, 
and then aged comma 80 is older than aged. And then you can see that about to fail, you know, the frailty and of course it, about human. Uh, when you look at this mesh, there are about 10 to 20 assigned to each article. And some of them can have at the end asterisk star sign. It indicates these terms are major, major terms to describe the study. So these are my data. I only collected not all mesh terms because there are too many and some of them are minor. I only collected major mesh terms. So when I look at them from 1980 to 1989, there are 234 major mesh tons. So if you look, this is a previous graph I showed to you. So in 1980 to 1989, there are not many. So I rendered them using tree map. As you know, tree map graph is not very precise, but it can give you some general idea. Um, from left to right, the frequency, based on frequency, the box will get smaller. From top to down, it will also get smaller. If you look at on the right bottom, that's where fewer ones are existing. What I notice is that in 1980 to 1989, the articles assigned with obesity was actually smaller than the articles tagged with lead. Then I also found that something interesting that I didn't, is a major topic for cancer and studying enhance. On the next decade, the number of unique major mesh increased to almost 600. So we're talking about this period. The number of publications have grown slightly. So if you look at the tree map, one thing that will jump at you is that there are a lot of terms that are used to describe the new mesh terms to describe. That's the first thing. And then obesity became the number one condition assigned to the studies. Unfortunately, that is still here. Going to the next decade, the topics or subject assigned to studies of NHANES has grown to 1,500. We are looking at this period where the number of publications has grown substantially. If you look at this tree map, again, the one that jumped right at you is that there are so many new topics assigned to the studies that it's not even square, it's almost dot. And then obesity is still number one topic. And again, lead is still here as one of the major topic studying in Haynes. Going to the most recent decade, the terms now have grown to almost 2,500. So many new topics, new terminology have been tagged to the NAS publication that now it's no longer possible to have the dot. So here it indicates that there are just so many, maybe there's one topic for one study. Again, obesity is still number one condition. So I am going to pause a little bit here because I don't want to lose anyone completely. <laughs> Looks like you're following, so I'm going to move on. As for method two, I did, uh, I analyzed title word. For any of you who have never heard text uh, analysis, this might be a little bit confusing. Because I'm not expert myself, but bear with me. What I did was I harvested title word. Remember the publication, 11,056, I harvested all their title. So this is an article written, co-authored by Stella, Asian American Dietary Source of Sodium and Salt Behaviors Compared with Asher, Other Racial Ethnic Group, and hence 2011 and 2012. I harvested all this title of all articles. So it looked like this, without frequency. What do I do with this? First, I found that there are uni over 7,800 unique title words. A unique title word. The word that appeared most in title was adult. Now, I'm going to ask everyone, what condition appeared most in titles? Can someone tell me if anyone answered my question? 
the number one condition used in title word. Hi, Yakju. Someone said hypertension, someone said diabetes, and obesity. Whoever said obesity have been paying attention to me because you remember in my tree map, the obesity was number one uh, mesh pegging. When I look this different word in terms of frequency, what jump right at me, words that represent subgroups or minority groups, such as African American, Hispanic American, Asian American, and Native American. So I decided to pursue the studies on minority health. What do I mean by minority health? I'm trying to find title word that has like African American, Asian American, Native American, or minority racial or disparities in title. What did I find? The articles that have those words, name of minority group or minority or disparities in their title are like this. If you made a title to describe their study, these are the studies that I can claim that about minority health. So it looks like it's increasing. Oh, one, one thing I want to explain is that I didn't double dip. If there's a study, study that comparing African-American and Asian-American, it's not two studies, it's only one study. But in terms of increase, if you put that in context, if you compare that with all the studies published, then it's not that impressive. If you look at in terms of percentage, the proportion of minority health in total, and Haynes publication is decreasing. Again, when you look at data presented like nice graph like this, it may look very authoritative, but my method, I'm finding some frauds, so I have to work on this. I am thinking that it's not going to be significantly different. I also was interested in looking at subgroups. So I looked for subgroup, Native American, Asian, African American, Mexican, and Hispanic, you know. When I compare this four group, this is like this. Then here I doubled it. So if a study compared, let's say, Mexican and Asian, I, it will get one for Mexican and one for Asian. So I doubled it in this case. And what I found is that I um, have compared, uh, studied more about Mexican American than any other ethnic group. And then African American was number one until 2000, 2004, and then outnumbered by other group. The studies on Asian American is really growing. And then Native American, very, very minor. In this case. Another thing I looked was journal titles. So many journals have published their studies. The top 20 journals in 1980 and 1989 were like this. If you remember from total publication from this period from 80 to 89, there are only 233. So there are not many. But if you let, take a look, General, American Journal of Epidemiology is number one, and you recognize these titles. And then there are two environment health journals. And I said that uh, cancer was, I was surprised to find. And here it is. You have, if, if there are two cancer journals making top 20 in 1980 and 89. Going to 1990 and 99, the graph has become a little bit longer because we have 686 publications. American Journal of Epidemiology is still number one. You recognize JAMA and Pediatrics. Slowly, Obesity Journal is making in the top 20 and then uh, environmental health journals still here. More recent decade, we have a lot of increase. Now the number one is American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. You still find the pediatrics in JAMA. The New England Journal disappeared from top 20 uh, last decade. And then you see ethnicity and disease. So this explains the increase of minority health uh, studies. And again, obesity is making top 20. The environmental health perspective, one of them. The last decade, most recent period, so we have a lot of publication over 
7200. Now, PLOS One is publishing a lot, becoming number one. This is very impressive given that PLOS One was created, I think, in 2006. And then obesity is uh, moving up, and then pediatric is still here. We don't see JAMA anymore. Another thing impressive is that we have uh, three environmental health journals making top 20. Is there a story to tell? I don't know yet, but um, impression is that the number of journal have increased, not just article increased, but the number of journal increased, which you don't find is surprising because the journals are popping up every day. What, what I want to explore, and I had a lot of time, I wanted to explore if the number of journal actually lead to more and more specialized journal, meaning that if the article is about eye disease, they tend to be published more in ophthalmology journal as opposed to general other journals. And same thing with environmental health studies, if they, are, they tend to be published more in environmental health journal. So three environmental health journal making top uh, 20, and same thing with health disparity. This is significant issue in terms of readership. If the article is published in a certain journal, and then it, the readership will be smaller. But I want to emphasize a new way to approach literature review. Um, if we have 10,000 or 20,000 articles to review, traditional method will not work because it will get very old by the time you finish. So that's what I'm trying to come up with, big data approach to literature review. And I also want to emphasize the titles are important, not just for my study, but when people search article they're looking for, whether it's a Google Scholar, whether it's PubMed, title play a very big role when retrieving. And when I was looking at title, there are a lot of words that I found are not very helpful for searching. So be very thoughtful when your article is accepted. Next step you want to really think about is, can people find it easily? So think very careful about title. So I didn't say much about this, but data must be cited, cited properly in references. One of the reasons why it's difficult to retrieve a publication using particular data sets such as NHANES is because many authors cite them in text, which is considered to be informal citation when they should cite in references that make it easier to retrieve. So here is this uh, the beautiful picture that I show in the cover. After um, harvest data from PubMed, you can also use PyMed, PubMed access through Python. So you may want to try that. And for mesh heading analysis, I got code from Lisa Circus at NIU. So if you are from NIU, she will be a great resource to learn about research metrics and data management. So that's from me. I am going to stop sharing and anyone have questions? You know, in life, questions are guaranteed, answers are not. So feel free to ask questions. So Yunji, there were there were um, kind of a question and a comment. So you may have addressed it in your last slide, but um, there was a question about the visualization tool you used for showing uh, the the mesh term analysis. Was that using PyMed? PyMed. There maybe I didn't do it right. I couldn't import mesh from PyMed. If you have any question about how I did it, uh, I will be happy to share it with you personally. When I clean the code and then I cannot move it, I will share my code you, uh, in GitHub. But for the code for um, met, uh, using Mesh to analyze article, that I need permission from Alisa because I borrow from her. But eventually, <laughs> Eventually, if no one asks me any reference research question, I will have a lot of time and I will be able to 
uh, work on this and make better plans. So I am over time. Where, where I was, okay. We have question and answer, a question. I would like to learn how Yong Sui Lee performed the, oh, actually, I'm breaking my rule. Rob, ask me a question. <laughs> so I, I wanted to, yeah, so I see that one question and then there was a comment which I wanted to share about um, articles with non-English ab abstracts are harder to find. Um, so they recommend having um, English abstracts. Um, although I guess in PubMed, those are represented typically, or, or there might be a translated abstract in PubMed uh, where the titles in brackets, at least that's been my experience. Also uh, a comment about using standard terminology, which I know in other areas that I've worked with in terms of uh, working with groups and trying to do systematic reviews has been a challenge. I don't know if you had any comments about the sorts of terminology you've come across or any of the um, mm -hmm. other uh, presenters in terms of making these kinds of literature reviews that you're doing more uh, systematic and easier to do. Again, do you have answer like, That you, was you more of a systematic review expert and <laughs> Carrie too. Well, I've certainly run across it in the toxicology realm that um, there can be some deficiencies in the mesh hierarchy in terms of describing uh, some tox toxicology concepts. Uh, this is, really isn't, so I can speak to that, but not, not so much to other, other uh, sort of ways of describing this data. But that was just a comment, not a question. So uh, we can go to the, the next one, which is a Question again about your um, your data analysis tools and what you used, which I, I, I think what you're saying, what you had just said was you'll, you'll share your analysis and, and yes. how you how you generated those pictures. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can share my code. If you want to know, if you want to learn how to do it, there are many sources that you can use. If you are affiliated with Hopkins and also NIU, I looked up NIU, um, you have access to LinkedIn Learning, uh, formerly known as lynda.com. So you can learn data visualization. Tree map, I don't recommend using it. As I said, it's, it's not very precise. It, it's difficult to find which one is bigger than which one. And then the box get really smaller. I try that just to get an idea. Once I know if something is going on, I will go for something else. Uh, there are many, you know, better resources than me because I'm just studying. Uh, so that I can, if you're interested in learning, I can send you the link how I learned it. Now uh, we have, um, we are done with the presentation. So I would like to uh, ask the speaker in the final closing, if you can give an advice to our attendees who, who are interested in using NAs for study, but have very little experience because a lot of our attendees have very little experience, what would be your advice? One minute. Uh, start with Megan. Yeah, great. I, my one piece of advice is always start with a good research question and then identify if NHANES is the right vehicle to answer that question. So there are many criteria of a good question. I think it needs to be of interest. It shouldn't already have been answered and it should be something that is feasible to achieve. So based on whatever criteria you have, um, just spend a little time on the question first. That's my piece of advice. Uh, Yutaka? Yeah, actually, before I go to my advice, I have to mention something. Um, so I said, no, uh, we don't, uh, you know, places visited by any hands have not, have, are not disclosed. Uh, and there is an important exception to that, which is state of California and Los Angeles County have been visited many times in the past and hands. And that fact are out. And also you can access the data necessary to the specific estimation for California and Los Angeles. You can access those data. 
at the, through the RDC. Thanks. And uh, so my advice would be uh, similar to Megan. Yeah, uh, you, it's easy to use in hands, but, but it's important to be a good subject matter expert. If you keep studying a subject matter, there are always, I don't know, I shouldn't say always, but there, you can find something to study using Enhance. And uh, in the, my you know, last 15, almost about like 15 years of experience, things I think, oh, I, wanna, I can do this. I won't do this. The, the list is sort of a getting longer and longer. <laughs> and I think you uh, invest your time and efforts. I think it, same, something like that would happen to you. Thank you, Yutaka. And also, again, as I said in the beginning, I'd like to invite you to come back and give our full length seminar because I know you usually give overview for over an hour and you have to cut a lot of material. So love to have you come back. Now, next, uh, Stella, one advice, one minute. Yeah, I mean, I would echo what, what Megan was, was saying in terms of the, you know, starting out with a research question and a conceptual framework. Um, in particular, you know, if you're interested in digging into some of the disparities pieces that I mentioned today in my talk, like maybe NHANES isn't the best study design for you, or maybe it is. So I think identifying and matching your research question to the data that's available and not trying to make a round peg fit in a square hole or vice versa. Um, I think I, I mentioned this at the end of my talk, but I really encourage everyone to just think carefully about what representative re representativeness actually means. Um, I think like don't be afraid to like dig into like survey documentation and see like, oh, how come like Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders are not here? Or maybe like how come who's in that other category? And I would say increasingly, you know, over the last 10 years or so, there has been more and more attention placed on the other group, on the multiracial group. There's a lot of question marks about what to do with those individuals. I think past practices have been to delete them, but I don't think that that's going to be the correct way to move forward. So, you know, if many, as many of you are, you know, not newer to NHANES, not, not to say that you're necessarily young in your career, but newer to NHANES, I would say don't be afraid to sort of dig in there and understand who you're actually you know, representing and um, if that really is adequate to address the research question that you're trying to ask. Thank you, Stella. And also, I asked you and you said it right, yes already. So I'd like to invite you back to talk, give a talk in full length. For those of you who are, are still staying with us, if you're interested in knowing all these new classes coming up, I will talk about how you can get in touch with me. Now, Josh. I would echo what Stella said, check the documentation, read it, reread it, and uh, it'll answer a lot of your questions. They put a lot of work into it. You should put a lot of work into reading it uh, and take it, its, its recommendations to heart. Uh, and if you are going off the beaten path in terms of analysis, I would highly recommend collaborating with a statistician or epidemiologist who is who's skilled in these particular uh, practices, um, we can be very helpful in helping you make the most out of, of NHANES because it's an excellent uh, resource for, for learning um, many different fields. So, Thank you, Josh. And okay, so I'd like to introduce Gayen Yenokian, Executive Director of Biostatic Center. Gayen, could you give us a few words about how when they need help from Josh, how <laughs> how they can get in touch with me or um, about your uh, centers, how you help with our researchers at Hopkins. Great, thank you. And I, I promise I'll keep it under one or two minutes is, is because we're just finishing up. And so just to reiterate, so my name is Gayana Yinokan and I'm, uh, Josh and I are colleagues from the Biostatistics Department in the School of Public Health at Job, Johns Hopkins but we also belong to this smaller group called uh, Johns Hopkins Biostatistics Center. And we're an applied arm within the department and we support, provide biostatistics and data management support. So it's a wider group of us who essentially do consulting, sharing of best practices, education, 
and and essentially at all stages of research from study design and different types of study design observational clinical trials to data management setting up uh, databases data quality control to analysis and and publication so for those of you who are within hopkins we we're also partners with the institute of clinical and translational research ictr and so if you just want to quickly find us, it's ICTR Biostatistics Program. And so we offer both virtual now walk-ins as well as abilities to submit short requests for smaller projects. And then of course, those might develop into larger projects and, and maybe even long-term collaborations. We also do work with researchers outside Hopkins. So we have a mechanism for that. So if you actually find us on the website, the easiest way is to go to biostatistics at Johns Hopkins. And then there is a, a panel on the left hand side that says biostatistics consulting center. And so there are lots of questions explain both our combined experience as well as the type of uh, projects we do as well as how to work with us, especially for those who are outside of Hopkins. And then last small thing is the email would be Johns Hopkins biostatistics center. So JHBC at jhu.edu is another way to, to contact us. So I'll just stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe 30 seconds, could you take, talk about a walk-in clinic that you offer? Of course, and we actually offer two types. So one is for faculty and staff. And so those are three per week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a nice split between different software programs. So Tuesday we have SAS and uh, Kit Carson is actually one of the participants. So she's the one who runs the clinic. It's a full hour and, and she can answer others as well, but her primarily software is SAS. We have Leah Jagger who, who works in R and that's a Wednesday clinic uh, at 11. And so the one on Tuesday, 1.30, Wednesday at 11, and then Thursday at, at 11 as well. And that's me and I primarily work with Stata. Uh, and again, any other type of questions, this is primarily for short walk-ins. Just imagine if you just have a quick question about something. Again, sometimes it's hard to determine, so we might advise you to, to submit the request and work more extensively on your question, but those are the three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thank you. Now, Kevin, could you reopen the third poll? So regarding the voting for next year's data topic, I was told that um, there are many people who didn't get to vote. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe they all left. <laughs> or, so maybe we can just get it later. But if you, um, I, I would like to say a few things. Um, if you are on Twitter, I will be tweeting information for upcoming classes, any event using hashtag NHANES2020. You can also follow Megan and Stella and me. And also for all the restaurants, I will be sending um, the survey tomorrow. So if you fill out your email address, then you will receive information. Or you can email me. I will include you um, when I send out the information. So I think that's, that's it. So this has been really wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, didn't really expect it when I was talking individually. So thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Hopefully we will meet again, really meeting again on site, um, meet, get to meet our uh, attendees. Thank you for all the work. Thank you, Young Ju. Thank you, Yonju. Thank you, Rob. Thanks to everyone who came. Thanks to everyone. Wonderful job. Thanks.